Tomorrow will be Acts of Kindness and Gratitude Day in Lewiston, Maine, exactly one week after the shootings that claimed 18 lives. The victims' friends and family members and survivors of the attacks will surely feel even more love and support from the community as investigators work to determine how this could have happened when there were a number of warning signs. WBZ's Christina Hager is live in Saco, Maine. And Christina, some people there reported their concerns. Yeah, Lisa, this is the Army Reserve base where Robert Card trained and where some of his fellow reservists noticed his mental health was rapidly deteriorating. What could have saved these people, whose faces are now on crosses outside of Shemengi's Bar and Grill, one of the two scenes where a mass shooter took the lives of 18 people last week? Alan Nickerson was there. I see him, the gun's at me, he fires twice. One hit me. He lived. His best friend Joe Walker did not. God, I'm going to miss him so much. At memorials today, questions about how gunman Robert Card was able to follow through with threats he had made before. The ball was dropped. This guy fell through the cracks. Newly released documents from the Sagadahawk County Sheriff's Office show the signs were all there. One from the Army Reserve Training Facility in Saco. The September 15th report says a fellow reservist was concerned that Card is going to snap and commit a mass shooting. The report says after he became physically violent shoving a friend, he spent two weeks in a mental health facility during a training exercise in New York. Card said he has guns and is going to shoot up the drill center at Saco and other places. Security and, analyst and Ed you, Davis. You, how long can you incarcerate someone if they say something like this? How, how long can you hold them in a mental facility? How long can you hold them in a jail cell before they get out again? It, it, the, the law is not clear on this issue. On May 3rd, members of Card's family told a sheriff's deputy he was hearing voices or starting to experience paranoia and had recently picked up 10 to 15 guns and rifles. I was here like a week ago, so I'm always here. So these are familiar faces. When Ashley Gilman looks at this now, she sees a reminder of how fragile life is. I think it's definitely making sure you're checking on people. And if you see something like that, to reach out. Security analyst Ed Davis says the responsibility of this should not fall only on law enforcement. He says part of the problem are laws that prevent mental health professionals from alerting law enforcement when they sense someone is dangerous. He says those laws need to be reexamined. Live in Saco, Maine, Christina Hager, WBZ News. All right, Christina, thank you.